Hello, I'm not going to go through the difference between client server and peer to peer networks. This is yet another way to categorize a network. This time we're categorizing a network based on their behavior, and in particular, the hierarchy between the devices in the network. So let's define two key terms straight away clients and servers. A client is either a device or a program that requests something. And a server is the flip side. A server is a device or program that provides something to a client. So neither term kind of exists without the other. They are coupled together here. They need each other to exist, really. Now, I've said something as a very vague word. This something is normally a resource or a service. A resource can be like a file or a web page, something which you immediately can use. A service is more something which takes some processing for the server such as sending an email or processing some data for you. Now, when we think of a server, we typically think of something like this or this, quite a strange looking computer, very technical looking, not very aesthetic, often sat in a big data center with loads of other similar looking computers. But importantly, servers aren't always these types of computers. They can be just sat on a normal computer. I could decide to run a server on my laptop or on my phone. You don't tend to do that, but you could. That being said, the servers we do typically use, like these ones here, would have a more powerful CPU, way more storage, way more memory than a typical computer would. And that's how a server is able to handle so many requests from clients. Now, in a client server network, these roles are fixed. So devices are either a client or a server, and this won't change. So your device, is preset as a server. If it's not a server, it will be a client. So here could be a typical network. I've got four clients all connected to a server. They're not going to change roles in this situation. The clients will request either resources or services from the server. These are called request messages. The server will then process this request and respond. It could say no. You could request a file and it says, nope, you're not having that file. Most of the time it will give us whatever we're asking for because that's the role of a server is to provide resources or services to a client. Now, most networks are client server networks. So websites use this approach. Cloud storage uses this approach. We'll look at these two examples in the next couple of videos in more detail. Most online gaming is client server and app stores are client server, right? If you want to download an app, you request the app from the server. The server sends you the app you install it. So most networks are client server networks. And this isn't related to topology. This picture here looks like a star topology. It may well be a star topology. Equally, it could be one of our lovely messy mesh topologies. The topology doesn't matter. Whether it's LAN or WAN doesn't matter. This is independent of anything else. It's just about how the devices behave and what role they take on. Now, client server networks contrast with peer to peer networks, sometimes written as P2P. Now in this type of network, devices can switch between acting as clients or servers and no single device is in overall control. In a client server network, the server is the boss. In this type of network, no single device is in charge and they're able to freely switch between the client role and the server role. So this laptop could be requesting say a file from this laptop, that laptop can respond that's perfectly fine. This role could switch a minute or two later. At the same time, we could have another request response communication going on between the iPad and the phone. And it's all independent of each other. And you can connect device to device. The devices can easily switch between this. No single device is in overall control. Now, this isn't used as often. It is used sometimes with Bluetooth transfers because they're really quick to set up. Bitcoin and other cryptocurrency rely on a peer-to-peer -peer model because people who use cryptocurrency don't like, say, a bank being in control. And in cryptocurrency, because it's peer-to-peer, -peer, nobody is in overall control. There are some file sharing services, often illegal ones as well, which rely on the peer-to-peer -peer model. And some online gaming does, although typically big games companies prefer to manage their own servers so they can monitor things a bit better. Which leads us into evaluating these approaches. So most networks are client server, mostly because people like control. They like to have control over their networks. And in a client server network, 
the server has overall control over what is happening in that network. And this means it's able to, for example, monitor the traffic. So in a work environment, you might want to see what your employees are requesting from the server. You can't if it's peer to peer. The server in client server is able to enforce security on certain shared files. I said earlier that it can say no to requests. So if you are requesting your boss's personal file, it can say no because your access rights aren't valid. Also, as the network manager, you can put in various bits of security like encryption or firewalls, and you know that's going to apply to the whole network. You're also able to back up files centrally. So you might prefer to have a service so you're able to back up. In peer-to-peer, -peer, individual devices can back up, but it doesn't mean they will, and you can't really control what they are doing. In terms of the users, users might benefit from a client server network because servers are often, not always, but often more powerful than normal computers. And so therefore you as a user may have a faster experience. But if you are playing a game on PlayStation and it's running off a big company's servers, that's likely to be faster than if it's running off some person's laptop. However, if you are going to get a powerful server, they're going to be very expensive to buy and do require specialist maintenance. You have to have somebody who knows what they're doing to look after the server and fix it when it occasionally will break. And the server itself is a single point of failure. That's both in terms of security. If a hacker managed to gain access to the server, they can gain some very, very sensitive information. But also in terms of performance, if your server is slow, it's going to slow down the access for all of your clients. And also if the server goes down, potentially none of your clients can access the resources or services they need. The points for evaluating peer-to-peer -peer are somewhat just the opposite of these. Peer-to-peer -peer networks are quicker and cheaper to initially set up. No specialist hardware or expertise required to set these up and maintain it over time. And if any device fails, the rest of the network is able to still operate because we haven't got that server. If the server fails, all of it fails. But in this case, no single device is your single server. So therefore, if any of them fail, it doesn't really affect the rest of the network. However, because each individual device is less powerful, it can be less reliable. If you are needing a file from one laptop in particular, that person turns their laptop off to go to bed. You then can't access your file. So that can feed into this lack of reliability. Whereas a server typically runs 24-7. It's designed to be up all of the time. Individual people's computers aren't really meant for that. Because each individual computer may be less powerful, responses to requests can take longer. These are just normal computers, not fancy servers. And because each individual computer is making its own decisions on things like security or backups, there's no consistency. And as a network manager, you've got no control over what each individual computer is doing in terms of its security or backups.